So let's have a little chat, shall we? Let's have a little occult chat. This is your host, The Occult View. Um, today is a glorious, prosperous, abundant field, good, healthy day for me, and I hope it is for the people that really rock with me. The ones that don't, I don't give a fuck what happens to you. Find what you find on your own. <laughs> That's how I feel about that, if you don't rock with me. Anyway, let's have a chat. You know, it's all about keeping balance. It's all about keeping balance. So I just got out of the bathtub. I'm feeling refreshed and rejuvenated. Um, but I want to have a little chat about something and the importance of keeping this in mind. There's a woman who's a neighbor of mine, and I, and I do like her, but she did something that ended up backfiring on her. I went to the eye doctor early part of this week that just passed. I believe it was Tuesday. I went to the eye doctor. It was Tuesday. And I just had a regular yearly eye exam. I always get them. I go to the dentist. I get my eyes exam. Get my blood work done at the doctor. Just be sure everything is okay. I'm not a, I'm not a person that runs back and forth to the doctor every five minutes. Every time I have an ache, or, I, I don't, because I don't get no aches and pains like that. So, you know, I don't have a, I don't have any health issues. I don't. But I do go and get my eyes checked, get my teeth cleaned, and I do I do at least do that. So after I came back from the eye doctor, you know, I was wearing um, some shades because, you know, when they dilate your eyes, your eyes are a little sensitive to the light and the elements until it wears off. So I was wearing some dark shades. I came in and I was talking to some of my neighbors, chopping it up, you know, cool, you know. And... I was telling this particular neighbor who I will call Netta, I was telling Netta what my eye pressure was and everything was fine. She gonna tell me, that's abnormal. I said, what? That's abnormal. My eye pressure is, is lower than that. You know how black people are. You know, black people, you know, they think they know every motherfucking thing. That's why I don't like fucking with niggas. That's why I don't like fucking with niggas. They are always trying to speak sickness and negativity on people. But it's my fault. I should not have said anything. You know what I'm saying? So she really tried to make me feel a certain type of way because of my eye pressure. First of all, normal eye pressure is between 12 and 21. Okay? 12 and 21. She claims hers is 12. Well, hers is 12 because she takes eye drops. If she stops taking those eye drops, hers would not be 12. Mine is not 20 and it's not 21, okay? And then take into account that I am a man. I have a bigger head. I have a bigger face. You know what I'm saying? I'm a big, I'm a, I'm a man. Men are naturally bigger than women. So maybe my eye pressure may be a little bit higher than a woman's. It could be. So she tried to tell me that I had something that I don't have. Right? The day after that, I didn't, I'm just finding out about it today, actually, or yesterday. After she did that, I didn't like what she said to me. I came in here and did work. And see, it wasn't necessarily about being vengeful, but it's about reversing that negativity that she was trying to direct at me. And see, the thing is, I don't even think she was doing it intentionally, but it doesn't matter. You cannot go around. The, the, the moral of the story is this. You cannot go around throwing negativity at people, even inadvertently. You have to be careful what you say, especially to a person like me. Because when people do that, I consider that, I consider that a semi-attack spiritually. So what I did was, after she did that, I said, I'm going to keep listening to this bitch talk. And I said, okay, this is what you're saying. That's what you're saying. Okay, 
I'm going to listen to what you say. Then I'm going to come to my altar and I'm going to do the Lord's work. I'm going to do the Lord's work. And y'all know I'm being facetious. I don't really mean doing, you know, the Lord's work. You know what I mean when I say that in spiritual terms. I don't mean in no Christian way. But I'm going to do the Lord's work. Since you're trying to sit up and throw negative energy at me for no reason, we were having a friendly conversation. Then all of a sudden she started being all negative, talking about this and that. I was like, this bitch is really trying to come for me. And I've never done nothing to this bitch. Piss me off, but I held my composure because spirit said, Seer, this is where you learn lessons. Don't argue with that. And don't argue with that ignorant bitch. Don't go back and forth with that ignorant bitch. You just reverse what she said. You reverse what she did. Come to find out yesterday, she had to be rushed out in the ambulance. Because her blood pressure went up sporadically and extremely high. And she almost fell out. And she was calling all these different people, calling everybody on the phone because she was scared. Now, this was the day after. This was the day after she tried to speak illness on me. You see how that works? You see how that works? Her blood pressure went sky high. Well, Anybody's blood pressure would go sky high if you were like her. She claims she don't eat beef. She claims she don't eat pork. She don't eat fish. But yet she'll sit in front of you and eat a whole pan of fried chicken. If I ever get it, like sometimes if I if I have the, the, the taste or the urge to get some chicken from Popeye's, the most I will get is the most is a four piece. And with that four piece, I will give two of those pieces of chicken away, if not three, and I'll just eat one, maybe two at the most. Because the last time I got some chicken from Popeye's, I did a door day. Well, that chicken was good that day. I hadn't, I hadn't eaten Popeye's in over a year. Well, not over a year, but it's been, it had been almost a year. And it was good that, that, that day. I got me a four piece and because it was through DoorDash and I had like a credit or something, I said, well, let me go ahead and get a four piece. I called my mother because my mother don't live that far from me. I called my mother and I said, Mom, do you want some chicken? And I took her up, took her over and took her up some chicken, you know, and I only had two pieces for myself. That's the most that I can really, really eat. But this woman that I'm talking about, she can eat all. She was at a function that we had and she had the whole pan of chicken in front of her. But you want to talk to me about my health, which my health is pristine and pretty good for the most part. I don't have any kidney problems. I don't have any liver problems. I don't have any heart problems. I don't have any lung problems. I don't have any throat problems. I don't have any brain problems. I don't have any, you know, no real eye problems. I mean, I do wear glasses, you know, I do wear glasses. But I don't have any blood problems. I don't have any cancer. You know, I don't have any leukemia. I don't have any of that. I don't have any diabetes. I don't have any cholesterol problems. I don't have any, uh, what else? What's that other problem? That, 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 that's um, no triglyceride. As a matter of fact, the last time I did my blood work, my doctor told me that um, my cholesterol is actually the model cholesterol that they want for people. And I'm not all that small in my body, y'all. I'm not, I'm not no small person, okay? I'm a chunky boy, I always have been. But I don't have any of those problems. It's just in my genetics to be a little, to be a little chunky. It's just what it is. People either like it or they fucking don't. And quite frankly, it's more ass for you to kiss if you don't like it. That's how I feel about it. But you have to be careful what you speak on people. Because the moment that I saw what she was doing, I did work to reverse that. And you got to nip that in the bud. You got to nip that in the bud. 
if my doctor, my eye doctor, eye doctors, especially the ones who are specialists, ophthalmologists, see, I see an ophthalmologist because I wear glasses and, you know, he just wants to make sure everything is okay. Ophthalmologists, they know what's going on with your eyes. They know. They can see in the back of your head. They can see if you got aneurysms. They can see if there's blood vessels not operating right in your eyes. They can see all of that. If he didn't see an issue, then why the fuck is she trying to make an issue for me? That was some hating ass motherfucking shit. And then she's the one that had to end up going out in the ambulance the day after she did that. Well, that's because I didn't work on her. And I'm not bragging, saying that I'm some big bad person, but you will not speak negativity on me to my face or in private and think there won't be repercussions for that. That's what I'm saying. You got to be careful who you speak on. You have to be careful who you speak on because you don't know what type of work that person is doing. You don't know. Like that song by Pebbles and Babyface, you never know. You never know who you're messing with. This is why I don't go around, unless they're messing with me. This is why I don't go around underestimating anybody. I don't do that. I don't go around trying to aggressively, you know, speak illnesses and sicknesses on people because I don't like seeing people sick. I don't like seeing people worry. See, what she did, that's that's a that's like a um, what do you call it? That's like a mammy effect. That's the mammy effect. That's a mammy syndrome. You know, just like a lot of these people that live in my building, especially a lot of the black women, unfortunately. All they do is stand around all day, standing all around in groups, watching people. You know, the men do it too, but it's mainly the women. They stand around watching people and gossiping and, you know, talking illness and talking harm on people. But yet you're the ones being taken out in ambulances every day or every week. You're the ones whose blood pressure is your whose blood pressure is going sky high through the roof, but you're speaking illnesses on other men and other women, and they are vicious towards other women, especially other black women. They are vicious. These women in this building where I live at, they are vicious to other women, especially other black women. They are vicious towards one another. And you have to be careful who you speak negatively on. You have to speak, you, you have to be careful. I'm not the one you want to do that to. Because I will do work on you with no problem. And you'll never see it coming. See, I'm a different type of person. And I'm a different type of gay guy. I'm not like the rest of these gay guys who play with, uh, who just play with tarot cards. My dear, I have tarot cards but I do a little bit more than that. Okay? So this is just a lesson to people. Be kind to people as much as you possibly can. Be kind to people. You know, wish people well that wish you well. If somebody don't mean you no harm, and even though she might have thought she was helping, when she saw that I was resistant to what she was saying, she should have stopped. She should have stopped. But she kept on insisting. She kept on insisting. And I said to her, I said, don't be speaking no illness on me. Don't be speaking no shit like that on me. I told her just like that. And she said, oh, Lord. I, no, ain't no all oh, Lord shit. Don't be speaking that motherfucking shit on me. And then they had to end up taking your ass out in the ambulance because your blood pressure went up. No, that was that was a spirit telling you, you better be careful who you speak illness on. That was a reverberation back to you. That's a testament of my spiritual protection. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, can't nothing happen because I'm not trying to walk around like I'm the biggest and the baddest, but I don't go around speaking illness and negativity on people unless they do it to me. You, you, you know what I'm saying? 
So this is just a lesson to be kind to people. We need to be, we, we as people, especially black people, we need to learn to be kind to the people because a lot of the stuff that we go through as black people, a lot of it is because we're not kind to people. We want everyone else to show us love, show us kindness, show us acceptance, show us this, show us that. But then we turn around and do something like Netta did. You have to be careful who you speak. People that I like, I don't speak no negativity on them. If I like a person, the only thing I do is uplift them. That's it. I always wish them well. I wish them prosperity. I even may give them ideas on how they can get prosperity. Like my play little brother over in the UK. I wish him nothing but the best in life. If he becomes a multi-billionaire and I don't, I am happy for him. Because usually the younger generation tends to be a little bit more su more successful than the prior generation. And I'm all for that. You know, because he's going to be in this world a lot longer than me. Same thing with my nieces and nephews. I don't want them to have to go through the struggles and things that I had to go through in my life after I'm long dead and gone. But with a, with a lot of these older people, the, especially these older black so-called elders, th th they don't have that wisdom. They don't have it. They want to see the next generation fail. They do. And what she said was absolutely out of line and out of pocket. And that's why she got that motherfucking work. And that's why she got that motherfucking karma, as you all call it. Sometimes you got to check a bitch or a nigga. You don't let them speak no negativity on you and you just go on and go, go about your way. No, 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 because that shit can take root in the universe. You got to do work to reverse that shit. And that's exactly what I did. I reversed it and then she ended up having to be rushed to the hospital. And I knew it was what I had did. And I don't give a fuck what none of y'all say. Oh, he crazy. He ain't gonna, well, fuck you. Fuck you. This ain't an ego thing. It's a protection thing. Especially if you got kids, too, because people speak ill on people's children, too. On babies, they do all that type of weird, all that type of shit. And I find especially a lot of older black women, a lot of older black women do this type of shit. I'm talking about when I say older, I'm talking about, you know, 60, 65 plus. They do a lot of that. I suppose men do it as well, but I find this to be prevalent with a lot of older black women always speaking negative, negative, negativity into or into the universe or negatively about younger people. You know what I'm saying? But it's my fault because I became a little bit too relaxed with her. You know, and I thought, you know, now she's getting a little bit too comfortable and I'm going to pull her to the side and I'm going to let her know I did not appreciate you talking about my eyes. And trying to say that my eye pressure was abnormal when it was not because you don't know what you're talking about. You need to mind your fucking business and you need to worry about you sitting up eating whole trays of chicken, a fried chicken. And I'm hungry, so that kind of sound good right now, but not in a whole fucking tray. Maybe a wing, maybe two. But that's it. But that's what glutton, gluttons do stuff like that. When you're a glutton, you're liable to say anything out your mouth. Glut because you put it, you put anything in it. There's no you know, there's no limit to what you put in your mouth. So there's no limit to what comes out of your mouth. And when you're operating from a low place spiritually, then that's what, that's just what it is. But don't speak negatively on, don't speak negativity on people because you don't know what type of defenses that person may have. 
especially speaking it on me. And like I said, I'm not the biggest and the baddest, but I am what I am. And you all are what you all are too, the ones that really rock with me. You all are what you all are too. Don't let nobody speak no negativity on you and you just sit back and take that shit. Even if you don't respond, see, sometimes spirit don't want you to respond verbally because when you respond verbally, they can suck your energy. No, you just say, okay, and you go and you do your motherfucking work and watch it manifest and take root. That's all I'm saying. Keep my motherfucking business and name out your mouth. If I've never said anything shady or derogatory towards you, don't do it. But I'm going to pull her to the side in a nice way. And I'm going to tell her that I didn't appreciate what she was saying about my eyes. I'm going to tell her that because that's not your place and you didn't know what you were talking about. But I'm going to do it in a respectful way. Moral of the story again, be kind to people. Be kind to people. Being an asshole, whether you're a man or a woman, does not pay. It does not pay. Not for you. It may pay off for the other person because I've gotten many blessings since that day. Anyway, let's have a chat. I want to talk about Generation X. And I've talked about Generation X again. And you know, I went back and I started looking at the old Omen movies about the Antichrist. You know, the ones that came out in the 70s, the early 80s, and the early um, 1990s. And they recently have a new movie called The First Omen, which is a prequel to that franchise. But I want to talk about Generation X. And how it ties into the Omen movies. If you're not an occultist, then this, then, then you wouldn't understand. If you're not a spiritualist, then you wouldn't understand. So this is not for you. Let me be clear about that. If you're not an occultist or a spiritualist, then this information is not fucking for you. Go on about your business. Don't even try to understand it because it ain't for you. But when I really examine the omen, when I really look at it, Damien was actually a symbol for Generation X. But they put it in a connotation of fear and negativity. Because there has been no other generation that has been more stigmatized, attacked, and basically um, eradicated to a certain extent more than Generation X because Generation X was supposed to be the generation to make the most change in the world for the better. And it doesn't matter what race you were, white, black, it doesn't matter. It's all about genetics. That's why they call it Generation X. We're talking about genetics. That's why it ties into the, the 666. The neutrons, the protons, and the electrons. That's why, that's why it ties into all of that. The omen was about the Antichrist. Well, that's how they tried, that's how they had to tell the story. But what they were really doing was they were subliminally programming people to be afraid of Generation X. They were telling you about the coming of Generation X, about the many people that were going to be born during that time of Generation X. Generation X was one of the most creative, one of the most innovative generations that ever were born, good, bad, or indifferent. No other generation has been up under, under more scrutiny than Generation X. Why is that? I believe starting from the mid or late 60s, on up into, I believe, the late 70s or maybe, yeah, the late 70s, because I'm Generation X. I'm Generation X. I'm not a millennial. I'm Generation X. I was born in 79. 
So up until 79, I believe, that's all Generation X. And you have to think about the climate on the planet that we, I'm sorry, you have to think about the, not the climate per se, but when I say climate, I don't mean the weather. I mean the energy on the planet and all of the things that were taking place on the planet during that time. For example, when I was born, that was at the height or the, I think it was starting the downside or downslide at that time. But that was during the, the gay revolution. Um, there were a lot of, um, that was post Vietnam War. So I was born into some very interesting energies during that time in the 1970s. So we have to look at all of that. We have to examine all of that to understand why was Generation X so scrutinized? You know, why was Generation X um, examined, violated the way that we were? Why did we have so many hardships? Because that was by design. When you go back to the omen, when you go back to the omen and you look at how Damien Thorne was targeted because he was the so-called antichrist, they looked at him as being evil because he was bringing about change. Now, in the movie, of course, he, you know, he was considered evil because he was killing people and stuff like that. We get that. But do you notice how? If you really take out the connotation of fear and the, the sinister and the evil part, if you take that out of it and you look at it in terms of Generation X and everything that we've been through, we're just like Damien Thorne. They're doing to us or they did to us the same thing they did to Damien Thorne because they wanted to stop him. They wanted to stop Generation X. So what did they do? Let's let 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 let's look let, let's look what they did. And they and there was some collateral damage in this. So it wasn't just Generation X that was harmed, but subliminally and subconsciously we were harmed. Let's just look at it. Once they realized through their science that this generation was going to be the generation to bring real change, what did they do? Let's start with the black community. What did they do? They started flooding crack into the black community, which that was the, the crack epidemic in the black community. That was a Holocaust. That was a Holocaust. They flooded crack into the black community. They flooded people into the black community to cause you think all of this stuff that's going on with the immigrants and the flooding of immigrants into this country do you think that that's that's new no that's not new they flooded a lot of these violent people into the black community back during that time during the crack epidemic they flooded them into the black community they flooded drug dealers into the black community um it caused the separation of families it was apartheid and a holocaust all in and of itself. Then when that didn't really work the way that they wanted it to, because the grandmothers came in and saved some of the children, my grandmother was one of them. When that didn't work, they came in with the AIDS epidemic. You really, do, you, do you see how the crack epidemic and the AIDS epidemic were all intertwined? Because that was a, an attempt to destroy Generation X, even though there were other generations that were messed up behind it, but it was actually put in place to destroy Generation X, the generation that was supposed to rise up and make a better change spiritually because Generation X were more spiritually advanced beings that were incarnating into the world at that time. And they knew this from the formations of the planets and the stars, the same way they were in the, in, in the omen, when they put a lot of emphasis on, you know, the signs and the stars and the signs in the universe and of the planets that signaled the, um, the birth of the Antichrist. But in actuality, 
it was really the birth or the rebirth of the Christ consciousness through Generation X. So they flooded the black community with drugs, drug dealers, and then eventually AIDS and HIV. See, the AIDS and HIV part, that is what they use to take out the creative Generation X white people, the white gay men. That's what they did. That was a whole holocaust against gay white men as well. But nobody ever talks about that. The creative ones, the ones who really brought a certain change to the planet, who helped to raise the vibration of the planet. Because, see, that's what Generation X was really supposed to do. We were supposed to bring in and help to raise the vibration of the planet. But what happened was, because this planet is so immersed in negativity, they had one up on us. They had one up on us. So when Generation X kids were born, we were born into broken families. I know I was, and I'm not ashamed to say that. That's part of my victory because I can talk about it. We were, we, were, we were born into broken families. We were born into families that didn't have no money, that didn't have no generational wealth. We were looked down upon because of that. We were sent to inner city schools that abused us and misused us and maligned us. Then some of us like me who came down with the gay energy or the androgynous energy, as you all like to call it, we came down with that. That even added even more insult to injury because our own community started attacking us. Oh, he's a faggot. We can't accept him. But they don't tell you that the word faggot really derived from the 19th century as a term used to describe detestable acts that a woman committed. No disrespect to women, but I'm just telling you the etymology of the word and where it came from. It wasn't until the 19th century or the turn of the last century that it became a derogatory term used to describe a gay man. And there is a difference between a gay man and a homosexual man. The men you see in Hollywood, they are homosexual. Gay men are men that are like me that... We nurture more so of the spiritual side. Yes, we like men, but we are more harmonized in our energies. Homosexual men are men who are more ritualistic. They have sex with men for a more ritualistic purpose. You know, like I could possibly see the Andrew Tate's doing allegedly. It's more so of a conquer and a ritualistic thing. It has nothing to do with you having a genuine interest and another human being because they're the same sex as you. No, it's based upon predatory ritualistic purposes. That is why there needs to be a separation between the homosexual and the gay person. But people don't want to have those types of conversations because they're too controversial. Happy Pride Month to my fellow gay brethren and sisters out there, by the way. But I've always had pride. Because love is stronger than pride. And I've always had love for myself, even when people told me that I should not. And that's what they did to Generation X. They told you, if you're a single mother, you should hate yourself and you should hate your children. I'm not promoting any agendas. I'm not saying what it is, is what it's not. I'm just saying what they tell people to do. If you're a single mother, you should hate yourself and your children. But they don't understand that the reason that a lot of mothers are single it's because of the Holocaust of the crack epidemic and the, uh, uh, the AIDS epidemic of the 1980s. Because not only did it affect people physically, it had a devastating psychological effect on black people, white people, and other uh, uh, people of color as well. Black and brown people, white people, and other people of color as well. We don't talk about it. And I know they can be kind of racist sometimes, but we don't talk about all of the atrocities that Indians still go through over in India, how they are over there starving. 
and suffering, how the AIDS epidemic affected them over there as well. So it was really a global holocaust. Generation X, again, was supposed to raise the vibration, but what ended up happening was we ended up getting caught up in the initiation and in the ritualizations. We ended up getting caught up. I know I did, in a way, but I was a child, so I didn't know. They get you caught up in the school system, the education. The so-called educational system, which does not educate people, it just turns you into a good follower and a good listener and a good memorizer. You memorize stuff. Not saying that people shouldn't get their education. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. But that's what the educational system did. When you obeyed, when you obeyed what they told you, you got rewarded. See, I was a rebel. So that's why I'm not you know, where I should, where I could be financially because I disobeyed them. I was not going to do what they told me to do. I didn't like school because I knew the game. And again, I am not encouraging any young people that watch me not to go to college and not to go to school. Go and get your education and you do what's right for you. I'm talking about for me. Because I didn't like school when I was going to high school because I was traumatized going to high school. I was traumatized going to junior high school, dealing with all of those psychopathic people. But when I look back on it, that was the disease that was the mental disease that was put upon my generation, Generation X. That was the mental disease that was put upon us to turn us against each other, to hate one another. Instead of coming together, not, as in, not, as, not in no kumbaya, but at least coming together to understand what's going on. Why were we, why was my generation so looked down upon? Look at the circumstances that a lot of us had to come through. And I'm not making excuses, but just, just examine them. I mean, me, myself, I was raised around a bunch of drug addicts and drug dealers. And it was nothing but the grace of the mother goddess that I didn't turn to that. See, that's how you know you have grace when you have been subjected to so much negativity and you still come out like a beautiful swan. You know, I remember one time years ago when I was a teenager back during when the dinosaurs ruled the earth <laughs> millions of years ago, when I was going to church and when I was <clears throat> a Christian, the minister looked at me and said, you know what? You're the rock. And there was some spirit backed up to that. He said, you're the rock. He said, you know why I call you the rock? He said, because you cannot be moved. You cannot be touched. You cannot be moved. You're the rock. He saw my strength. He saw my spiritual strength. And I ain't even, I forgot the pastor's name, but I didn't really care for him that much. But he saw my strength. He knew what I was. He saw what I was. He knew that despite the fact that my family, my peers, the, the system here in D.C., all of these people always tried to look down upon me and tear me down and try to act like I wasn't good enough and I was this and that. Despite all of that, I'm sober. I ain't on drugs. I don't, I'm not an alcoholic. And I'm not bragging, but I'm just telling you the strength of the spirit and the perseverance of the spirit and the perseverance of grace. But Generation X was targeted and we were, it was by design for a lot of Generation X people to fail. That was by design. 
because they knew that, that the rise of Generation X would be the end to a lot of these illusions and fake elites and all that other bullshit. You notice now a lot of the people that are that were born in Generation X, you notice now a lot of them are dying off, coincidentally. You know what I'm saying? And the people that did support Generation X, they die off mysteriously too, it seems like. I mean, we can talk about some mysteries on a side note that we really don't know that have never been solved. Anyone that has tried to help anyone in any point in history, not just in Generation X, but at any point in history, anyone that has tried to help anyone that is trying to raise the vibration on the planet, you notice that those people end up dead like Marilyn Monroe. She was trying to help Ella Fitzgerald. As a matter of fact, she did help Ella Fitzgerald, who rose, who helped to raise the vibration on the planet. And what ended up happening to Marilyn Monroe? See, we don't really know all of the details, allegedly. We don't know who was up in that house August the 4th or August the 5th. I think she died August the 4th or August the 5th. They found her, I don't remember. But her, the, the anniversary of her death is coming up in August. We don't know who was up in that house and who stuck that um, poison laced or I'm sorry, that toxic field laced suppository that was filled with barbiturates and nimbutol in her rectum to kill her with a lethal dose. That was the word I was looking for. I ain't had my coffee yet, child. We don't know who stuck that lethal dose in her rectum, allegedly, that took her out, allegedly. We don't know why there was government surveillance all in her walls. Whoever bought that house, they started to tear down the foundation of the walls and saw all of these surveillance things in her wall in Marilyn Monroe's house. Why were they surveilling Marilyn Monroe so much? See, anybody that tries to support the people that are trying to raise the vibration, they become targets of gang stalking. Marilyn Monroe was a victim of gang stalking and it was right under her nose. Sometimes gang stalking can be somebody that's just around you and you don't even know that they're stalking you. They're just there taking notes. Marilyn Monroe also was helping to raise the vibration on the planet because she had a love frequency about her that people didn't really understand. They just thought of her as some dumb blonde. But Marilyn Monroe was a very intelligent woman and she liked black people. We don't really know what happened to Natalie Wood. I know I'm going off the, the track, but this is what I do. I'm the Cold View. We don't really even know what really happened to Natalie Wood. Now, do we? Yeah, I know Natalie Wood liked to sleep around and stuff like that. I still don't think that that was very nice that Elvis went around telling people that her private parts smelled. That wasn't nice, allegedly. We really don't know what happened to Natalie Wood off of those, off of the coast of those waters of Catalina in 1981. I mean, the only people that really know is Robert Wagner and Christopher Walken, who was on, they were the ones on that yacht with her. Or did Natalie Wood fake her death to get out of that industry? It's something eerie about that. I wish American Horror Story would do a season about that. Or at least, you know, touch on it in some way. Not a whole season, but touch on that. What really happened to Natalie Wood? Why was she, why, why was she, I'm going to come out and say it. Why was she taken out? Why did, why did her husband kill her? Allegedly. Because you know that's what they say and think that Robin Wagner killed her. That's what they say. Why? 
What's the what's really going on? We really don't even know what happened to Joan Crawford. Because Joan Crawford was receiving death threats. That's the real reason that she stopped coming out in public. Because somebody was threatening to kill her. Joan Crawford knew a lot of people's secrets in the government as well. She knew a lot of secrets of politicians and government officials. See, a lot of people didn't know that. Joan Crawford also supported people, no matter what they said about her and Mommy Dearest. I get it. Got it. She was a horrible mother. But she also supported people that helped to raise the vibration on the planet as well. So did Betty Davis. Yeah, I know they say Betty Davis was a witch. Hey, I, I love her even more for that. Her daughter's a quack pot, that damn BD. Your mother dying is dying and you're going to, mm, child, don't even get me started on that. Now she's a, she's a born again, BB, she, I mean, uh, BD, born again Christian. Spewing all that fucking nonsense. For all we know, she could have had some, mm, child, let me be quiet. Let me be quiet on that one, child. We don't really even know what went on between Joan Crawford and her daughter, Christina Crawford. Do we really know? I know Christina wrote the book. And now, now, all of a sudden, Christina Crawford has disappeared. She's no longer in public eye. Right after they did that series feud, Betty versus Joan, with Jessica Lange and Susan Sarandon. Not a peep from Christina Crawford since. Before then, she was doing interviews over here, doing interviews over there. And I know she's not dead. So what's up? I hope she's not. The reason I'm bringing all of this up is because it just goes to show you how people will stop other people from helping to raise the vibration on the planet. And if they can't raise the vibration on the planet, they may be helping someone to raise the vibration on the planet. And quiet as it's kept, quiet as it's kept, I think Joan Crawford kind of liked black people too. A little bit. I know Betty Davis did. But Generation X was the generation that was supposed to bring about great change. But we got caught up. We got caught up in circumstances that had nothing to do, that, 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 that was really out of our control. Some of and, and see, what separates some of us from others, some people are good followers. When you're a follower, you get rewarded. See, a lot of people think they're getting rewarded for obedience from God. I'm sorry. There, a lot of people think that they're getting rewarded because they are obedient to God and the word of God, right? But in actuality, you're not obedient. You're not being obedient to God. You're being obedient to man and man's vision of God and man's word. See, when you're obedient to man, man will give you materialistic things. That's not coming from God. When you're obedient to the spirit, you get blessings. You get blessings that are worth more than what you call money and materialistic things. See, money is designed so you can live on the planet. And that's controlled by man. But when you are obedient, and I, I don't want to use the word obedient, but when you follow and you are guided by your spirit and you don't ignore your spirit, you get universal blessings that are worth more than green, worthless paper. That's going to only get you but so far. Spiritually. You see what I'm saying? So, no, you're obedient, but you're not obedient to, to God because the spirit is God. The spirit the Holy Spirit, the divine spirit, the great spirit is God. And I'm not talking about Christianity.
Generation X was supposed to be guided by the spirit. But a lot of us in Generation X, we gave up our spirit to be guided by man and his will. Same thing with Andrew Tate. Now he's walking around talking about America is so horrible and America is this and America is that and America ain't shit and all that. But yet you were benefiting from America. Andrew Tate knows what's going on. I saw a clip of him uh, yesterday where he was talking about, um, well, what did he say? I got to remember what he said. Something to the effect that when you don't um, go to orgies and do inappropriate things with children and stuff like that, you know, when you don't do those types of things, they come after you. But when you're a self-made person, but he's not a self-made person. Andrew Tate is not a self-made person. Dude, you were on Big Brother. You are orchestrated and created by that same institution that you're now speaking out against. The only reason he's speaking out against it is because the money ain't flowing no more. Because you didn't live up to the contract. You know what you have to do when you get into that industry. So there's no use in trying to speak out against it because you were all for it. He was all for it. But he's an example of of someone that's not led by the spirit. That is why he's trying to find spirit. Now, he went from atheist to Christianity. Now he's an Islam, an Islamic person. And you're not going to find spirit in none of that because spirit does not come from a religion. And it, it certainly don't come from a man. Spirit comes from the divine feminine. And he has a disrespect and disregard for the divine feminine. So where are you going to find your spirit? That is why he's caught up. A hundred million dollars and he can't even enjoy it because he's caught up. He and his brother Tristan, they're caught up because they're not, they're not guided by spirit. And I don't give a fuck about any of you niggas that, that's mad about what I'm saying because it don't apply to you. What I'm saying to you is, and I'm telling you some good shit, heterosexual men, stop following a person that's not guided by the spirit. You need to start following the spirit and not the, ide not the ideologies and the ambitions of man. And the world is led by the ambitions of man. Generation X, we stop being led by the spirit because some of this is our fault too. We stopped being led by our spirit and we started being led by the thought process of corrupt men. Generation X was supposed to raise the vibration on the planet and we started doing that through the music. But then they found a way to use the music against us. They found a way to use those frequencies against us. And then anybody like a Tupac even though people say Tupac was an asshole, I don't care. He made music that made you think. Anybody that did anything that, that tapped into any form of spiritual consciousness in any way that they possibly could, they would take them out. Or they would put them in situations that would get them taken out, like they did Tupac. And now all of these people that are coming out. And you know what? I, you know, I'm not a D.L. Hughley fan. I don't care for him like that. But D.L. Hughley is right. All of you people that's calling out P. Diddy now, I'm talking about in the industry. All of you people that's calling him out now, you've been knowing what this man was doing. You've been knowing about it. It's just now you're calling it out because now you all are turning against him. Because he's no longer in the cult anymore. He's been doing these things. This ain't nothing new. He's been a problem for a very long time. This is nothing new. But now you call him out? He's part of the cancer of Generation X. And that's another thing. We have a, we have a lot of cancerous components to Generation X, and he's one of them. 
especially in the black community. You know, going back to how generation, how, how white people, for example, were affected by gener the, I'm going to say the curse of Generation X. Think about all the little white kids that went missing in the 80s and in the 70s. Think about all the little white kids that, that went missing, that they never found. Just think about that. Every time you turned around, just like that, and you know, art imitates life and life imitates art. Just like that movie Without a Trace. That was a sign that came out in the early 80s. That was a sign of the times right there. Think about that. All of them little kids that went missing in the 1980s, the 1970s, that was part of neutralizing Generation X. Sacrificing Generation X. And sacrificing is not always about killing somebody. Just think about it. Anyway, that's all I have to say. I just wanted to say that I'm about to go eat, I'm about to go eat me some breakfast. Probably going to eat me a bowl of raisin bran or something like that. But just, I, you know, I've just been thinking about that for a long time, about Generation X and how it ties into the Omen movie and how they were so adamant about stopping Damien Thorne. But there's a reason that movie came out in the 70s, because that's when a lot of the a lot of the more, I want to say, radical rebel type of Generation X people such as myself were born. The ones who were a little bit more spiritually advanced. That's when we because the ones that were born in the 60s, they were still influenced a lot by boomers. There's a difference between Generation X people born in the 60s versus the ones born in the 70s. The ones that were born in the 70s, we're a little bit more radical. We're a little bit more advanced in that radicalism in trying to raise the vibration of the planet. And we had, and see, that's another thing. We have Generation X people that were born in the 60s, early 70s, that try to stop us from raising the vibration of the planet. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.